So we've been looking at the Da Vinci flying pendulum, and this is the device that we made to investigate that. And we noticed something on it, and that was about the length of these bars and how fiddly it was to actually get it to work. It raised in my mind the question, is this whole top section needed at all? So I went back to Tinkercad and I drew up this. You will notice there are only six parts because we're testing an idea. I'm going to use a rubber band as the power source. Later, of course, we can replace it with a weight-driven mechanism. But just right now, we want to keep it simple, so let's print those off. So in addition to the printed parts, you're going to need some string, a bit of 6mm bar, this is steel 250mm long, a thrust bearing, and this thrust bearing is a... Uh, 40, 42 by 25 by 11, and an M12 nut, and a rubber band 100 millimetres long, 5 millimetres thick. So to make it, take the base, that bit goes into the base like that, just shoves in there. The steel bar shoves in there. This is the pendulum, and you'll notice it's got a bevel gear, so I clearly intend on doing something with this, so maybe driving it with weights, maybe running a clock with this bevel gear, but your thrust bearing goes in the bottom of the bevel gear, so one plate goes in the bottom like that, the other plate goes in that section there, drop your race on, drop that onto there, then we have this, which is going to hold the other end of the rubber band, and that goes with the hook facing downwards like that, and then the winding handle gets shoved onto the top there. The rubber band hooks on that bottom hook, and then on the top hook with the ratchet. Like that, and then we tie a bit of string into here to hang the pendulum off, so that it can wrap around there three times. Right, and there it is with the pendulum tied on. Now you might have noticed this. It's a counterweight that I added because I forgot that when this pendulum is on, of course, it's going to tilt that way. So the counterweight keeps everything nice and level and I've added that to the drawing. Now, all we have to do is hold the cog and wind it up. <laughs> That's awesome! <laughs> So proof of concept, hey, that definitely works, so you would think that that original clock mechanism was definitely a little over complicated beyond what it needed to be. So we could look at this as being an alternative. Now obviously a rubber band is not ideal, but it does show that this actually works without all that gubbins on the top. All we really need is a rod there, and this near enough so that it catches and swings around. Anyway, I put these files on the Thingiverse, of course, should anybody want to play with these. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.